1981, we made a series about the Thames Valley Police that showed the inner workings of a force for the first time. Um, how many times have you had sex? Have you had sex regularly with somebody? With your boyfriend? Yeah. The series had a remarkable impact. But, um, if we take this, you know, if we deal with this as a rape, then you're going to have a hell of a load of barrage of questions put to you in a Crown Court, because it will go to Crown Court. You know that, don't you? You're going to have... It helped change the way we're policed today. It's all right, love. Just go back indoors. The last 20 years have seen a host of initiatives aimed at making policing more professional. I spent this summer back in Thames Valley to see the impact of those changes. So he, so he has been violent towards night, you. Which he obviously didn't carry out, and he's found out making similar threats today. Does he get the number of the car? Children the children in their throwing Never have police been asked to do so much with the same resources. They've got a lot of jobs on at the moment. You haven't been forgotten. 15, <laughs> One was wearing a blue baseball cap. No wonder everyone's asking, where have all the coppers gone? She's very unhappy uh, about the youth in her area. Thinks there should be uh, more policemen on the streets and he's going to write off to the, uh, the MP or the, uh, the Prime Minister. Uh... Yeah, just got a call coming in. Foxglove Gardens, Reading. Eight persons fighting the streets. Bottles and sticks being used. All uh, describes Pakistanis. Uh, over. It's three o'clock on a Friday afternoon in central Reading. A neighbour dispute is about to take a very modern turn. All vehicular access in the Fox Club uh, received. Police have closed off several streets to assess the risk. Eyewitnesses are giving conflicting information. Call a phone in to say that there are 10 IC3 and 4, which is black and Asian males fighting metal, metal pole sticks, possibly drug related. It's an address that we know something about. Um, We've had a, we had a very good drugs raid there a few weeks ago. There is apparently a yardy connection to it. And at the moment, it looks like uh, the first response is as we want. The helicopter, I can hear, is up and about. It's doing a recce, just to see what we can come up with. Police assume the rival gangs have retreated indoors. It's a typical police problem. But with modern gang warfare, they have to prepare for the worst. That's the sort of picture I take. So what we're looking at? There should be. That's probably just um, Foxglove. Superintendent Neil Olney directs police actions on the ground from a special incident room back at the station. That's better. Whatever they've done, that works a treat. Can you flag it up with the control room? She's walking out. And we need her grab charge. Where's the kids? There's babies in that address. No, there's someone grabbing it. There we go. Excellent. Grab her, grab her, grab her. That, that is definitely, that's and obviously, uh, make sure that everyone's clear of the road. Uh, One hour later, new information raises the stakes even further. Yeah, we've got, uh, we've got um, one of the Asian gentlemen uh, in custody at the moment. He had an offensive weapon on him. Um, he claims to have seen a firearm. Breaking my act. The buggeration factor, to some extent, is when you get major public order situations and someone says firearm. Obviously, our concerns then become safety not only for police officers, but the public and the people at the scene, because obviously there are a number of innocent people there. So, uh, obviously, firearms, uh, it raises the ante to some extent. 106, 102. Armed officers have now been summoned from three counties with enough firepower to deal with anything. Every gun and bullet is recorded for use in court or an investigation later. 20 years ago, this would have been largely dealt with by local officers. In the early hours of yesterday morning, there were three shots heard. So, yeah, no, it gets better. So what we may have, obviously, we've got this, um, this drug dealing going on between They are competitors. There's been a bit of a fight this afternoon, and the ante's been raised by the fact that there appears to be a gun. Inside the address is a drug dealer from and a child. Right. We think there's a drug dealer and a child in the house. That's it. It is Friday the 13th, though. Police are still unsure who's gone where. So after two hours of deliberation, they decide to take the house where the shots were heard. All officers involved, the incident Foxglove Gardens, a reminder, all officers to wear PPE. Their route is a potential shooting gallery. They're heading for the house at the end of the road. If a gun appears, they have a second to decide, at a distance, if the weapon is real and what to do about it. It's that blue door, the light blue door. Yeah, see the yellow one? 
and then the light blue one. So you're going to have to have, do a big loop. Slow it down a bit for me. Please turn up, starburst, they're gone. They've cleared off. So I think what we have at the scene, if we believe our people, is nothing. The threat may have gone, but the work is not over. I'm going to search it. Do you want me to do exhibits for you? Yeah, we're going to have to. We haven't even got a bus box, as far as I'm aware. But... I've got 15s, 34s, everything that we made. And I'll, I'll do Local PCs join in the search, which will last for several hours. The paperwork will last even longer. Police performance is now measured closely, but without arrests, it leaves out most events like this. Do you want some gloves, Paul? Yeah. In a world of drugs and AIDS, even searches can be dangerous. Experienced officers are leaving Thames Valley because of the cost of living and the pressure. It leaves Reading Duty Sergeant Penny Shaw badly short of staff. Each time somebody rings the police, wherever they're ringing from, a job is created, and that's where you get this number from here. So that basically tells me that that was number 1565 that was rung in to Thames Valley Police on the 11th of June. We grade things as an immediate response, a priority response, a routine or a telephone resolution, which means that an officer has to attend within a certain time. The control room operator will have a look at the resources they've got available to them, and if they are all committed with other things, we then have to put in there. We've noted the fact that it's overdue, no resources are available, everybody is out doing other things. There isn't physically a police officer that can attend that job at the time. Um, and quite often you will see those, and they will go on for pay pages and pages. I mean, this is coming at half past six yesterday evening and it's now, what, half past four today. So, I mean, that, bot, that job has been open on the computer terminal now for nearly 24 hours and we haven't resourced it. We, we come in quite often on duty and we'll have 24, 25 pages of jobs that are open that haven't been covered. Um, there just aren't enough police officers to do it. Yeah, he's going up part by HSB. <laughs> Cider mark suspensers. It's a late shift in Reading Town Centre. WPC Pauline Foy wants to do a routine stop and search, but her suspect has fled. He's going right, right, right. It's OK, I've caught up with them. Why didn't you stop when I asked you? I've You took one look at us when you came up, didn't you, up the road, and you did a quick what? spin round. That's why we stopped yeah, you. Has, um, yeah, because you're acting in such a suspicious yeah, manner um, that makes us believe either you've got you something on you you shouldn't back. have or you've done something or you wanted, yeah? Yeah, Do you understand that? Yeah, right. OK, all right. What we're going to do is just check to make sure we've got anything on you you shouldn't have. Shall I hold the bicycle for you? I'm not going to rush off with it, am I? You've got to stand with my colleague just over there. And we'll just see what's in it. OK, what we'll do then, I'm going to search you, all right? I'm going to the police station. OK, I'm going to search because you made off and I was all right, so I have a suspicion the amount of stolen goods on you, OK? Or drugs, all right? So you've got to put your arms out to the sides. Don't put your hands in your pockets, mate. All right? Have you got anything on you first that you shouldn't have? Am I going to find any needles or if there's anything sharp on you? No? All right, just look forward for me. All right. Oh, so now for you then, Sorry? A bit of fitness for you there? Yeah. Yeah. I need, I need that, don't I? No breakfast, no lunch, no dinner, no sleep. I'm running. The cyclist had nothing on him. Like many stops and searches, police suspicions proved entirely unfounded. Pauline's team spend most time just keeping order. Drink is usually involved. Oh, dear. 
Hello. So you're obviously having problems standing up, aren't you? Uh, could you get home on your own steam? Okay. I'm worried. You let go. You're I'm worried. I'm worried. You're fucking yeah, come on. Come on. There you go. All right. One foot in front of the other. Right. Just in there, my love. One foot up. One foot up. What we're going to do is take, you take you to the police station, all right, where you'll be a bit safer than on the street, won't you? You have to say to yourself, how much has this man had to drink to be in this state? And we've got a queue. It's not going to bother this man, is it? And you can have quite serious offences going on with people standing here queuing with a prisoner. So you've only got a choice of de-arresting them, you know, and, and chucking them out. Which really, if you've arrested them anyway, you're not going to do that. Or you just stand here and wait. So it's quite, it's quite difficult, really. And you have, there have been situations recently when everybody's in with the prisoners. But there's nothing you can do, is there? What can you do? Should we just check? Should we just, should we just check that he's fine? Maybe up and down. Yeah, you're all right. Okay, you can go back to sleep now. Just check you're all right. Go, go. Just walk, walk straight forward for us. There you go. That's lovely. Have a, have a wander. Have a, oh, have a, have a, have a sit, sit, sit down on there for us, because I think standing up's a little bit difficult, isn't it? Eh? There you go. No, I'm fucking pissed, man. I know I'm you are. I'm fucking pissed. Look. No, I'm oh, fucking mad. Stand on the line. Do you want to stand on the we can just fucking... Don't lean on there. No. Uh, uh, Graham, 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 quieten down. You're loveless, you're loveless. I don't it's love this. Wrong. All we're doing is looking after you, all right? That's all we want to do is look after you. What we need to do, let's take this jacket yeah. off. Come and sit down in here. There we go. Just there, look, where you're nice and safe. Do you want to stall in now? Yeah. Oh! Just check, babe. Just show you've got nothing on you that's not been there yet. Ah! 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 Just your belt. All right. Let's have a look now about his. Oh, oh! Graham, 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 Graham! Don't be silly! Graham! Look at me, Graham! Oh, fuck you, Graham! 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 Just a little bit, that's lovely. Just shh, shh, quietly. A nice... Taking Graham off the street has tied up three officers for over an hour. But if it's not about crime, most police work goes uncounted. Because everybody in the van's on a different shift, aren't you? You're off at midnight, you're off at two... We're all different shifts on me. And I'm off at seven in the morning. All different times. None of us work together regularly. So if we picked up a really big job now, how would we liaise with each other to get things sorted and do, and, and yet we'll all do the best we can just to make sure it stays a team and we work really hard. It's a way of getting yeah. more bodies out of the street. We can't The offender is still in the pub. We're going to need at least another unit here if you're attempting an arrest to see. Equipa zero one, we'll attend to be in the area. Okay. We can get out of this bloody road. Excellent, isn't it? We've got to shift it. Shift yourself along, quick. Get yourself along. Get yourself along. Stay there. Stay there. Pauline's van has been called to an assault in a pub. Alcohol still causes more problems to police than any other drug. They should be just here. Yeah. Across the road from the pub, two victims are already in the ambulance. I'll find out what's going on, I'll be back. Like, will you be able to point out the main people that have sorted those guys? Yeah. Yeah. Have there only got any weapons? Probably. 
No, no, we don't probably. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen anything? No, listen, no, 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 listen to me. Have you seen any weapons? Didn't have a chance to see, but thrown across the pub. Right, all right, listen to me. I know no. you're upset, but yeah. I need to ascertain whether they've got any I weapons. I didn't see any weapons. Lovely. But that's okay. That, no, that's all I right. know it's only speculation, but I know there'd be weapons and drugs because they're all high as kites. I mean, Steve, see them all in right. the men's toilets. Oh. On the I understand coat. I understand what you're saying, all right? I'm just asking you whether you've seen any weapons or not. Oh, no, that's the I didn't have a bit. chance because I was unconscious on the floor. Have you been knocked unconscious? Yeah, but that's happened before. That to me once. She's saying that she's been knocked there, unconscious so. in the pub. Yeah, all right. Somebody woke me up. Have you been drinking this face. evening? I had a couple of... Well, we haven't been right. out that long. Right, at the end of the day, from... listen to me. You've yeah. been knocked unconscious, all right? Something quite serious could happen to you because you've been knocked unconscious, all right, where you may become very, very ill. I know. And you're saying that you don't want our help, which is fine, that's your right, but we can't be responsible for you. We're not being horrible, but we can't be responsible for you. Do you understand that? Yeah. And you go home to your children and go to sleep and vomit in your sleep and swallow it, you won't wake up. Do you understand that? Yeah. Can you just sign there to say that you refuse medical treatment? I'll just go and see my doctor in the morning. That's not good enough if you don't wake up, is it? Yeah. Uh, Pauline, we're going to go to, the, going to, go to it and we're going to stop check everyone who comes out and get them to identify. Okay, okay? Yeah. All right. Gentleman in the window and the one in the white looking out now. Right, okay. He's been identified as being one of the ones that's assaulted them. And what did yeah, what did he do? He hit me. He well, hit you. Got, got okay, like, all right, that's not a problem. Is there a gentleman in the base? Is the gentleman in the base talk? Whoa, there's people leaving. Is there any of those that are leaving? In the red. Man in the red. Yeah. Gentlemen, if you'd like just to stand here, please, and talk to me. I'm asking you to stand here. Oh, sorry, but I'm off home. I'm late. You're not. You're staying here. Is it? Yeah, and this gentleman here in the red. Both of these have been identified as assaulting the gentleman in our vehicle. Could you just take catch hold of them for us? Um, well, I'm you have been stood that's in the car park, park and you've just nicked them for the yeah. sake of nicking them. Believe me, we've got better done. things to do than no. stand here. Well, well, Stop it. Believe me. Well, 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 yeah. Stop it. Oh, I'm going to turf you out. Do you want me to turf you out with this lot? Yeah. You want to be turfed out with it? I want to actually stay here. Shut up. No, I'm getting out of here. My dad never laid out on me, so what's your fucking We've got a fucking domestic in the car now. Come on, Lee. Got it. Kev, I've got a... I've got a domestic in the car. I'm going. Where are you going? Well, do your fucking job. Listen, she's, she's oh, upset. She's upset, don't you? Look. You can't say none of us have done nothing. 18 officers have turned up here. We've already arrested four people on the say-so of what you've said. And all you're doing is interested in effing and grinding at other people. Because I said to, be to her, because she said to me, oh, so what? I said, look, my dad never yeah. laid a hand on me. Right. Oh, oh fucking hell, no, listen, I don't know, Cole, because I've just fallen out with her big time. It was, right. was happening now. I've just said to her, shut up. The victims are no longer sure who hit them, so police release their suspects. The accused may still be inside. I think the offenders may be upstairs. So we've got powers to go in, but I need the paperwork to do it. I mean, after the quarter of these, you could do for public order offences. Right, you're in I'm charge of the search or no, no, yeah, Yes, no, OK. And we're going in under section 17. Shoulder number, Sarge? Uh, 2985. Do you want to come with me? We believe we know who the offender is, but I think by the time we got here, he'd already left the pub. The um, victims were very, very upset and just seemed to be pointing out people at random, so we arrested them all. Um, however, when they've had another closer look, when they've been in the back of the vans, they don't think it's them. So uh, we think the one has got away, as I say. How much of a break are you getting now? Meal break. How long? Five minutes. You work with Pauline, you don't take a break. Pauline's a very dedicated officer. She's been in about 10 years. <laughs> 11 years? Dear, oh dear. She's also a high ranking inspector in another country in the police force. Thank you. Enough. Well, I joined the Hong Kong police force. Um, 
such a long time ago. I think it's. Um, I think you think you're going to make a, you're going to make a difference. I think you're going to change things. It's only when you get older you realise you don't make a difference and you don't change anything. But you just do your best. Is there ever anything you've been to you can honestly say that it's made a difference? Because I can't think of anything that I've been to. Only one domestic violence situation. Yeah. Where the woman would not make a complaint against him, and I managed to talk her into it, and she, she went through with it, and she's now divorced. I'm really happy and. She's a lot better and she's yeah. going around victim support places now um, for people who've been hit by their partners and she's making a difference, so that's about my only success yeah. story, really. If I'd never joined the police force all those years ago, 1976... No, I wasn't even born. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I wasn't born till 77. Oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> then, is there... If I'd never done it... Road's entire list. Equa for zero one. Where's your phone? Zero one number s no Usk Road. Oh, we've been the there. Colour's daughter's ex partner is outside causing them problems over. Colleen's responding to a call about a domestic dispute. My side. Yeah, my side. Should be about here. And there's somebody outside there. That's this is it. Appreciate that. We're going we're going to go to bed. Yes, yes. I don't think they want you Speak here, my love. Come on. In the morning. Yeah? Speak to you in the morning. You don't want him here. You tell him you don't want him here. You're giving him a bit of a kiss and a bit of a cuddle on the door. Yeah. You're encouraging him to come back. It makes our job very difficult. Right. All right? Do you understand that? Yeah. So either you want him here or you don't. Right. Either you want us to sort things out or you don't. Yeah. OK? At the end of the day, we're not here just to get rid of him all the time. Yeah. OK? Right. Bottom line, not being horrible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but, you know, so there's a line yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, One hour later, and Pauline's van is back in the town centre. Yeah, the caller said the report of a male having a go at his girlfriend. It's gone back. It's gone back. It's smashed the door. Yeah, it's gone back. Yeah, it's gone back. It's gone back. Pauline's van is called back to the same house. Domestic quarrels are always messy, but police now take them far more seriously than 20 years ago. How long ago has he gone? Oh, I don't know. He came um, back about. 15 minutes ago. Is it a long time since he's gone? Uh, yeah, he, he picked yeah, up a piece of wood and threw it right through the door. He kept on oh, about right. wanting to come in and we said, no, go away, yeah, come back tomorrow. And he started shouting. I goes, I'm not letting you in, go home, I'm not letting you in. And then he went, right, and he smashed, smashed it right away through. All right, are you happy to make a complaint and take him to court? You've got to go to court and you've got to give evidence. He can't just be picked up and he just, just be... He can't be arrested just for, like... No, he's, you've got to make a statement and you've got to go to court and you've got to give evidence. Yeah. And it means standing in the box and saying, no, you've had enough. Yeah. You know, you do want him punished for the things that he's doing. He's yeah. being a nuisance and he's frightening the little one. All right? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. But if you, I can't just go and arrest him and without a statement, yeah. without going doing yeah, that. Do yeah, do it. But he'd been drinking in the day. You're all right, lovely. No. You okay? I ain't going home. I want to talk. I'm going to have told you. How old are you, Q? Six. All I kept Six. saying, I saw you play tired? games. Is it? No. Like I told you on the phone. I'm tired. And no, I ain't going home. Tired. I want to talk. No. I, he said, I, I saw that when you came in. I want to talk. In. Let me what, in. What, my handcuffs? Yeah. Let me in. Shall I put them on you? No. No. You're not going to arrest me. All right, then. So you said, let me in. I want, he said, let me in, I want to talk to you. And you said, so you said no. Yeah. So what did he do then? He picked up a piece of wood no, and threw it. Let Mummy tell me. You can tell. I'll do your statement in a minute. So that I All right. Oh, I'll try it. In Britain, domestic violence happens every 20 seconds. A woman dies from it every three days. Domestic. Church Street, Reading, response, call sign. Oh, can't. Can't do it all. It's the police, mate. It's the police. Can you let us in? So we can Pauline and her team party. have come to arrest the partner. I need to arrest you for criminal damage. You do not have to say anything. May harm your defence. You do not mention when questioned something you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. You need to arrest me now. <sighs> yeah, yes, come back Paul. To the station now, mate. <sighs> 
Sort this out quickly if you yeah. can't right Let's then. sort it out. Yeah. I mean, right. yeah, have no. you had a lot to drink this evening? No? Really. I'm just going to pop you in the back here, my love. Oh, no, don't you dare. Oh, not, not you, not <laughs> you. She's talking to Yeah, we're just going to wait that one on the radio. Yeah, um, yeah, this is fine. Can you also attend here as well to pick up a couple? Because uh, legitimately, we're just uh, struggling in. What we'll do is I'll pick up. Equa for 01. Yeah. What we'll do is we'll drop this one off and then come straight to you, received. I'll take this man, book him in. He needs to be interviewed and spoken to, but he's had quite a bit to drink. Then there's also. I think it's seven coming in from down the road. So we just want to try and beat everybody else so we don't have to stand outside custody for a long time, see if we can get there first. Which is very childish, but I don't want to stand outside custody. Pauline works one of three shifts that patrol Reading day and night. She's already been on the road for eight hours. And there's still another four hours to go. This is the new model, local Bobby. Steve Coverage is one of a team of local officers focused on Whitley, a tough Reading suburb. Do you want to go to Swallowfield, where we saw him going the other night? Yeah, sure. We've got a um, couple of lad, local lads here that we know, drug addicts. They've gone to uh, a place called Bainstead Road, which is not known for dealing drugs. Is Yogi on that dangerous push boy? So we just went, the parts up in the close here, we're waiting for them to come back to the car and then we'll turn them over. Stay in it. This is a rare chance. An undercover officer has spotted a drug buy taking place. They can catch the dealers red handed, almost the only way to ensure a prosecution. No, front of crazy road. Just, yeah? All right. Got a deal going down. All right, mate. Okay. All right. There's a deal going down. Okay. Cheers. Vehicle, vehicle's off. Which way? Which way? Right one. Opposite end. Opposite, opposite end. end. Opposite end, Chris. Other end. You seen the deal go down? Yeah. Come on, boys. Get in front of him, Chris. He's in front of him. Here he is. Go, 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 go. Get up. Go, go, go. He's it. You on. As often happens, police vehicles are no match for fast cars. They've lost both the escort and the evidence. Chasing after drug-related crime means other local problems must wait their turn. For you. Right. In the last two or three months, my love, we've had nothing but hassle. Right. Right, from kids. I mean, they've bent my garage door twice. I've had to have the council in to have the door put right. Mm -hmm. They've ripped me ring wear off my car. Right. Right, and each time a ring, oh, we're, we're understaffed, or we, we've got nobody available at the moment, we're sending somebody around to see you, but nobody's turned up. Right. And, and, that, and, and that is the bit that gets... I mean, it may not 
It may not be that somebody obviously comes immediately, depending on what's going on, but somebody obviously yeah, should that, have got that, that to you. No, so. that's, that's fair comment, yeah. but I mean, but I mean, I mean this, is the, this is the third time, yeah. like I just said to, to the show. local, local youngsters, is it? Yeah, oh, yeah. What sort of age are they? 15, 16. Do you know any um, of them? Um, uh, well, uh, yeah, Steve, Steve do. There, there's a, a vehicle got dumped. But yeah. like, so, so, are they now smashing up? Like this student last night, he he, he was what? He walked up the road, he, he he picked up a lumber lumber wood and smashed the windows of the car. What his dump one? Yeah, dump one. Yeah. yeah, and the headlights it just bang 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 along the front. Why? What's happening this morning is the council effectively are exercising a court order to strip his garden of all the vehicles, vehicle parts and rubbish that are on there. He has got potential to get excitable about anything to do with his cars. Steve spends most of his time dealing with low-level quality-of-life crimes. Once known as rubbish calls, they're now seen to be important to community safety. So what we're going to do is actually go down there and arrest him for uh, handling theft of that vehicle first thing uh, and get him out of the way. Today it's abandoned cars. Steve is part of an exercise to help the council clear a garden full of vehicles. Police have limited powers to remove them unless they're stolen or obstructing the road. Jay, yeah. can have a quick word, please? We need to speak to you about the uh, possibility of uh, handling stolen property and theft of a motor vehicle. Can you get some shoes on that? Come with us? Won't be long. The council has served notice on G, a Hells Angel with a record. Steve and Yorkie get on well with him, as they do with many people on both sides of the law. He's going to when he comes back. All right. <coughs> <coughs> All that trust that we built up and everything between ourselves and that. I think when he comes back, he's, uh, he's going to blow his stack. He has guessed what's happened. He had notice a week earlier warning his cars would be removed, but not his motorbikes. You've had it now. You, should, you shouldn't have took them fucking motorcycles what you've took and dumped. You've fucking done it now. You fucking pissed me. Yeah, fucking laugh, little man, laugh. I'm not laughing. These men ain't going to be around you all the fucking time. You've it, fucked up big time. It's all contained in, in the details. I've, I've posted it through, through your letterbox. Obviously, my I'll tell you what, when the fucking roof blows off the fucking house, you're going to come up here and stick that on, are you? Because the way it looks, you think you own the fucking property, don't you? No, no not at all. Oh, yes, you fucking do. But the way you've done that, what right have you got to take them fucking motorcycles and tools? It's fucking bollocks. Total bollocks. What a fucking crock of shit. Look at all the other fucking shit motors dumped everywhere. You don't do fuck all about that, do you? You don't get a fucking police running around doing that, do you? Nah. Nah, just me. So you've had your big fucking little victory, have you? All right. Cheers. Bye. Bye. <clears throat> the abandoned cars have gone and no one's been hurt, but it's kept five officers busy for most of a day. Yet all that will be measured is an arrest for a car that turns out not to have been stolen. Only one officer gets the credit for that, and the cars will soon be back. I didn't want to say anything. No, that was right. right.
Over 20 years, antisocial youth has become a major drain on police resources. 14-year-old Ben is so well known to local police, he gets an appointment to be arrested and challenged for his offending behavior. Yeah, that's right, mate, don't worry. Uh, <laughs> reason for coming over here, it's going to be a bit quicker, all right, uh, yeah. over at Reading. We'll get it all sorted today. Um, quick interview, and then um, we'll see the sergeant and make a decision as to what is going to happen to you from there on. Happy with that? Not much choice, really, have you? <laughs> In your own words, in your own understanding, why are you here today? Don't know. You don't know. Do you know a young man by the name of? Yep. You do. Does it ring any bells at all? Does it jog your memory? Do you want to tell me about it? Well, I walked past his house and he was stood out there with a couple of his friends. As I walked past, he barged me onto him and said, "What are you doing?" He turned and said, oh, "I'll just barge you." And we started arguing. And then he went to punch me, so I tripped him up and I punched him in his face and I threw him down his steps outside his front garden. So something slightly different, so that's why we're here today, just to sort of like clear this up, all right? Get to the bottom of it. He said that someone was knocking on his front door. No one even knocked his door. He was stood out front. Right, so what you're saying, self-defence then? Yeah. Is that right? You prevented him from hitting you by hitting him first. Do you think that's the right thing to do? No. What else could you have done? Just walked away, but... But... If someone's gonna go to punch her, then you know, just let him on you. Right, I'd like to move on from that. It's an allegation of common assault. He's saying that you went up to him and stood on his left thigh. No. Didn't even you. go nowhere near him. So it wasn't you then? No. Why'd I you was speaking of What do you think he would say that then? <laughs> it's obvious, isn't it? Well, no, there's, there's got to be a reason behind it, that's what I'm asking. There's something going on between this family and your family. Yeah. What are we talking about then? Well, she said that Ben robbed her house when he was at school. And she's told me if he goes in our garden, she tried to run him over three times, which I would try to report to you. Right. And that. But nothing's been done about that. So poor Ben, you know, we just run Ben over. Don't worry about that. But if anybody touches quick, the police come out. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Steve, I'm still waiting for the police to come out from last okay. Thursday. I appreciate that, Heather. At the end of the day, what we're trying I, to I talk about understand here. You. I know what you're saying, yeah. right? But what I'm saying is, yeah, right. I know he's a little fucker, Steve. Yeah. But I don't think he'd end up in an eight-year-old kid. I don't care what any of you say. You know what I mean? Yes. Dear Inspector Greenoff, I am writing to ask you for your help with our park. The problem is mostly teenagers setting fires and riding scramble bikes. There are people who drink and take drugs in our park. Please can you come and visit us so we can talk about what we want done about the park. Yours sincerely, Thomas Lacey. What should the children do when they are bullied to take drugs? You shouldn't ever, ever take anything which anybody gives you um, if you know that that's what it is. I mean, you should never, ever take anything from somebody you don't know. It can make you very ill. Very, very ill. Has anybody ever been tried to, you know, these people ever tried to give you any drugs? Yeah? yeah. Don't take. Um, Is it somebody that you knew or...? No, because uh, they went to give them to me and I ran. That's it, yeah. Run and tell your, uh, tell your parents. Get them to tell the police. To try and remember what that person looks like. Yeah, try and describe them to your parents and then your parents and yourself can describe them to us. Oh, there's... No, they split up and they... Uh... One of those uh, two uh, is, is well known to the police as a, as a shoplifter. He's also a drug addict, so um, <laughs> you, you tend to keep an eye on those sort of people, I'm afraid. Uh, I think you've got sort of reasonable cause to. You, you know these prolific shoplifters, especially if they're drug addicts, they need to steal to fuel their drug habit. So you know they're going to sooner or later. So you look at his eyes, you can tell can tell they're drug addicts. It's the look about them. It's just the oh, the furtive, 
haunted. I must get my next fixed look, I think. People don't know what's amongst their mists, do they, really? I mean, all sorts of horrible, nasty people walking about, and you don't know, it's true, isn't it? There you go. See, he knows, look, see, yeah, he knows, look, see, look at that, see? They know. They know exactly. 20 years ago, cannabis was the drug of choice. Now, the spread of Class A drugs is the biggest single challenge to Thames Valley Police. I would imagine that um, a good 90% of the crime that we're dealing with is drugs related. You've got people who are not working, no source of income. They've got a drug habit. They've got to fund that habit somehow. So they're out stealing things to sell. Um, a lot of it's petty crime to get their money for their drugs. Um, a good 90%, easily 90% of the people we deal with are on drugs. There's a big problem with heroin around this, uh, this neck of the woods. And we've got people as young as 14 that we've come across that are taking heroin. I'll give you an idea of how much this area is used for the smoking of heroin. Um, all the tin foil down here. Um, they tend to just throw it up and discard it away. Look at that. It's generally the end result. See the lines there, beautifully. There's the lines. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines of heroin. Well, <clears throat> there is evidence that they have been injecting. Sterrett's pre-injection swabs. Spoon. Spoons. So they are using it to inject around here as well. So the orange thing there, top of a syringe from uh, one of their needles. The drug culture at the moment is, is so widespread. We're gaining the intelligence on who our dealers are. Um, by taking out the dealers isn't necessarily going to solve the problem. It will make an impact for a short period of time until somebody else sees fit to set up selling drugs to, to the people who've already got a habit. Um, I feel myself at the moment, it's definitely something which is underfunded. It's a battle, I would say, at the moment that we're only skimming the top of. And uh, my personal feeling is we're losing at the moment. Hard drugs are also rife in rural, smaller towns. Police could clear out the dealers there, but at a cost. Assistant Chief Constable Sarah Thornton has given D.I. McIntyre of Newbury CID the funds for a major operation. I think it's much more doable in a smaller town like this. Yeah, you're talking about two roads, really. This is the main street. And that, effectively, bounded by the other one, is, is Newbury, really, on the, the Newbury town centre. And in terms of your criminality, I, I guess most of your burglars and thieves live and offend in the same area. You have a yeah, bit of they're all, they're of all Reading. Local. They're, yeah, all, yeah. they're all local, yeah. And I know from experience in Reading, you know, you get, you know, you get the whole spider people move in and move out. And, you know, that's, that is the London problem, I think, yeah. in terms of, you know, they don't know who the hell they got there. Most of the people around here are known to all the officers and vice versa, the opposite of that is the other way around. Because we're talking about a small number of people that commit all the crime, that which is common to everywhere. Yeah. The difference in this place is we know who they are. Yeah. We know their lifestyle, we do the grandfather, we do the, you know, we know the, the, the sons and daughters that come out of it. This morning is the climax of six months work, much of it undercover. The operation has been kept a tight secret. Now some 200 officers from all over Thames Valley have left normal duties with a false idea of what to expect. You've all been warned to come an Operation Flame, which was allegedly a joint operation to do with illegal immigrants. It's got nothing whatsoever to do with illegal immigrants. Um, this will be the largest uh, drugs operation that West Berkshire has ever run. You are aimed at taking out uh, a whole series of heroin dealers. The reason you were given um, the story you were given is to do with officer, officer safety. It is an intelligence-led operation. It means that when you go there, we know who we're going for, why we're going there, and what they've done. Okay. We're looking to bang up 18 of these people tomorrow. We're looking to remand them in custody. And what you do today is very, very important in relation to the searches that you're going to carry out. When you go out there, I'm going to put my neck on the block here, touch wood, they will all be there. But for an act of God, a bolt of lightning, or they've seen God. Something's happened out there and they've suddenly decided to go to Portland. <coughs> they will be where we say they are. Police must take out the doors of 20 houses simultaneously so dealers don't warn each other to destroy evidence or disappear. He's well known on the Newbury area. There's nothing sort of peculiar to him. You know, I'm not going to say, I'll go and have a look in his washing machine or anything like that. There's nothing like that. He's got warning signals. Um, 
drugs, weapons and violence. And the only thing of note for when you do get in there is it has been suggested that he secretes um, drugs up his back passage, so presumably he doesn't sleep like that. And the important thing is we catch we catch many of the users now when they're going to be they're going to be vulnerable because their, their easy supply is going to have gone. And before they get time to forage out and find you know, new dealers, then it's the time to actually catch them. Say now is the time to actually get some support, some you know some treatment or whatever. So Laura's to come along so that she can actually see what it is we're doing today and actually see what that part is, because Lola's Lord, heavily involved in the, in the partnership side of it and the, the aftercare treatment and whatever. It's a positive thing to know that beyond enforcement, at least the police care what happens after that. It's very much Convicted addicts return to crime, so this operation goes further. Yes. There is no point, you know, taking the mountain if you don't hold it the next day. So it's got to be part of a sort of a multi-agency thing to ensure that, that if we manage to, to arrest some of these suppliers who are really plaguing people's lives, then we can, we can hold that, get people into treatments. So at the moment, the situation is that somebody who makes that life-changing decision, I want to get treatment, can have to wait four or six weeks until they actually get into the programme, which by, by which time they've changed their lives, the, you know, they're, they're back in the circle. At the address is a pit bull terrier. If, we, if you do on the door then, then me and John will secure him. Yeah, yeah. sure, thank you. Then Right. We're going to have to work out if Steve maybe leaves it to us and tries to secure the dog. Yeah, well, we can secure that first, leave the, we can leave the box. OK, Steve. You got a warrant on the contract numbers? Yes. You don't mind doing the pit bulls. <laughs> so the bungalow is divided into two. It might be that uh, we have to bear in mind, just looking at, if there's no numbers, just taking the door description. OK, so just remembering from that door, it's blue. Up, up, yeah, in case both their doors... Yeah, hopefully it'll have number two on it, but you never know. Steve's team have the furthest to go, and he's got the pit bull to contend with. Listen. Got to prepare for the door firstly. We've got to think which side the lock's on. I'm going to hit it. What I do when I do hit it, when it opens, go in. Make sure that everything's in my mind so I know exactly what to do when I go in the door. And I haven't got to stop and think halfway through. Um, just make sure that the entry is nice and clean because if you bungle the entry, then there's no point because I'll be in the toilet flushing it before you know. Search the premises issued under the Misuse of Drugs Act. Let's copy the warrant. And I shall also hand you a copy of your powers and rights that you have whilst we conduct the search. There we go. Is there anything on the premises at the moment, Ali, that we need to know about? Yes, Nothing yes. at all. Protective helmet, that's just so that 
I don't get hurt on the head, that's all. Do you have a feel of that? Look. They should have gone in with one hit, but um, it's barricaded with a metal bar, which was bent, um, golf club, which went, two flat patch shelving units, a whole shelving unit, and an ironing board, which is bent as well. The lock went with the first hit, which was uh, just there. The two locks went then, because you can see it's missing that side, and the lock on there is broken. So the first hit actually broke the two locks, but we couldn't get in still, because it was still wedged firmly against the stairs, um, which is a common problem with the first floor flats like this, where the stairs are just behind the door. Um, can we bring it in the room? She's all done. Yeah. I'm just going to set the middle out base on him. Yeah, yeah. No, no phones are going to be leaving the house. Oh, right. oh, mate. They are. That's got my personal numbers in. They're all staying here. <coughs> I need my phone. Yeah. Yeah, I can't believe this is happening. By 8 a.m., 18 of 22 targets have been arrested. They're going to press me and dump it. Well, no, I haven't done fuck all, David. Fucking neighbours go to my office straight away, don't they? Mm. children here with the mother for now and take the male away uh, and then do the search while the mother's still here. <laughs> you set the car alarm off. <laughs> you can't switch it off. It's worth somebody explain that first, isn't it? Maybe someone's going to call the police. Yeah, they might well do. And how long do you think it would take anyone to get policemen that now? Oh, there'll be a normal shift on. There'll be a normal shift on. I can't believe this. Something has to go wrong, isn't it? Yeah, it always has to be on my bloody shift as well. Do you, um, do you tend to find that there are sort of regular sorts of hiding places that... Uh, no, not really. Not with uh, heroin, anyway, because it's obviously really small. It's sort of wrap. A wrap's about the size of my fingernail at the most. My little fingernail. Uh, it would be anywhere. What's the money? Uh, a lot of dealers tend to sort of put it up their That's bottom and it. underneath their foreskin at the moment. So will you be looking there? Uh, hopefully not. Not me personally, anyway. But I'm sure someone might have to. Not my favourite job. It's not the sort of thing you normally have in your bedroom, is it? It may well be that I have a problem with some other people, uh, which is why they keep it here. Uh, I don't know. I haven't got one in my bedroom. Not that I know of, anyway. Give you a bit of a shot. You school today? Within walking distance, apparently. Oh, yeah? Well, we'll check with Mum what she wants to do with you today, OK? Cos Mum's going to be coming with us for uh, a short period, OK? My worry now is that um, how much at risk are these children? What can be done? Um, and to what extent, you know, can we help um, these children to actually, you know, not experience any drug use themselves. If this mother gets arrested and eventually gets sent to prison, these children will serve the time also, in that they will have neither parent present. One parent is already in prison. Um, mother at risk of going to prison. And so basically we will try to put the right things in place. And having said that, um, we will try to get the mother help also. It's very, very heartbreaking. This is a woman who has said to me, you're here to help me. Nobody ever, ever said that. You see the police and you think the police are here against me. 
but it's a good thing that the human face here is that beyond enforcement, it's about help. The rest of the day and the next two months involve paperwork. Over 20 years, all attempts to reduce police paperwork have failed. Now half of every shift spend up to five hours inside the station. To speed up the trial process, Newbury detectives will copy a pile of papers three feet high for each of 21 cases. As it's done to help the prosecutors, that police time will go unrecorded. The operation has taken six months to bring all the local dealers to court. Including overtime for 200 officers on the raids, it's cost Thames Valley 75,000 pounds. But will the investment pay off? One month later, Assistant Chief Constable Sarah Thornton returns to Newbury to see if the gamble has been worth it. We targeted 22 people. We actually, on the morning of the raids, reached 21 of them. Mm. Since then, we've got the, the additional one in. When we went into the court, we got 16 of them remanded in custody. And so the immediate effect was they were immediately off the street. The whole purpose for the operation is ultimately to reduce crime on the West Park Police mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. uh, and dealing with uh, you know, drugs and drugs dealers is one, one of the tools for doing that, but hopefully a very effective tool. And therefore, one of the indicators of success one of the indicators is actually what has happened to crime. And really what we need to do is, and we have done, is looked at, looked at the first month, which is, which is July. So far it's quite promising. The acquisitive crime, such as burglary dwelling, is down 30%. A lot of our burglars were our, our drug users and, our, and, and did a couple of our drug dealers. Um, but the interest, really interesting one is the shoplifting. Shoplifting normally goes up at this time of year mm -hmm. because you know schools come off and there's something. And if you see last year, almost doubled in the month, and it's, and it's halved again. Um, down, and that, again, is, is a crime that very often drug users, um, Absolutely. you know, massive reductions, vehicle crime down by 52% and 42%. These are all crimes that, you know, our dealers and, and users were committing. And, and the other thing is, well, what, it, what it has done is it's freed up some of our resources to be dealing with other problems. So, for instance, in, later on in July, because we were there, had some, in a sense, space to move, we were able to target uh, a group who were, who were doing a lot of our vehicle crime. This is, but this is staggering. It's staggering. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the seven people who, who are hardened users, who are the ones that aren't the ones that can say, actually, the drug isn't available, therefore I won't take it today, the ones who are actually you know, hardened addicts, seven of them we've identified to go into treatment programmes. So they, you know, that will continue to impact, you know, because they won't be on this police area committing crime. Oxford has a major drug problem with a 1,000 local addicts. Wesley was often nicked by Sergeant John Clayton, who always refused him bail. I used to hate John. He used to hate me. Isn't it, John? He used to work, no, no, he used to work custody sergeant. I hated him. Every single... If I had a warrant out on the run on that, every single day he'd be kicking my front door off. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I've been to prison eight times now. I went to court for sentencing, and the magistrates, first of all, they said, well, what are we going to do, send him to prison again? Do you know what I mean? I, 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 I didn't even used to stay out longer than four months. Four months was quite a good run for me. And this cop would come and see me, and he said, I want to do something with you. Police now want long-term solutions to break the cycle of addiction and crime. Clayton runs Oxford's anti-car crime squad. He did his best to get Wesley off drugs and off the street. By getting Wesley to admit his offences, Clayton hopes it will make it harder for him to go back to crime. This is what a lot of people don't realise, that if, if someone's good and they're prolific, you know, that they're doing 20, 30 cars a day. Since we sorted Wesley out and got him off the streets, the city centre car parks in Oxford, uh, immediately there was a 70% drop for the simple fact that there's very few people that know how to do and get away with it. Yeah, there are people that dabble at it. Um, but not in the same style and league that he was doing it. I used to visit BMW on Summertown and Honda. Do you know what I mean? I knew which cars come with which stereos anyway, through just walking about. Do you know what I mean? All of that. And also which stereos were um, the newer ones out, the value, the codes that they started to bring out with them, what they looked so. So really, I just knew from... I could just look in a car and think, right, I can get 60 quid for that, so if there's anything in the boot, is a um, bonus, do you know what I mean? That's the... That was the thing for me. 
I mean, this place, I used to hammer it badly. <laughs> I wouldn't come in these exits. I'd come through the stairwell, yeah? That one over there, or that one over there, or if it was really, really dodgy and they was on my case, I'd come the main way through the shopping centre and just mingle with the people. And then it would be a question of how tight the security was on that day. I mean, Saturday's a very busy day, security is lax anyway. Weekdays like this is very open, look. Do you know what I mean? So it would be more of a look out for the brand new BMs and the brat like this one just here, look, do you know what I mean? <laughs> There's a beamer. Yeah, sensors in the top corners. So that one's bailed. Straight in front lot on it. And that's a Sony flip down CD player from the backs. You know the knowledge of the, what the, you know when people have took their fronts off? I know from the backs what the front should be anyway. I mean that one, the glove compartment's open. He's made an effort just to leave him taking their fronts off and just locking them in the glove compartment or... But that, to me, I'd still do that, cos it would be in the boot. All we've got to do, can I get in the boot? Yes, I can, cos it's 12 o'clock. Looks like that. Do you know what I mean? But when if it was like that, it means it's deadlocked, you can't get in it. You do the door on that. Basically, it's... <laughs> yeah, about that long, yeah? See this bit of plastic in there? in there, yeah, clip this, this whole plastic bit flips off, yeah, and you just put the straight in the lock and down central locking straddle. So that's six seconds, five seconds, because they're the newer ones, they are. So I'd open it, the alarm would go off, I'd find the front, run round, jump in the passenger side, pull that yellow bit forward a little bit, hook it once, hook it twice, it'd drop down, rip the wires, and then by that time someone might be looking, saying whatever, do you know what I mean? But I'd just go whoosh, straight into the stairwell. I mean, I was quite quick anyway, so no one would catch me in there. <laughs> front not on it, front's not on it. A lot of people are taking them with them now. They didn't used to, I... I mean... I wouldn't do that one, because Mercs are hard to do the doors on it. It'd be a question of a big window, do you know what I mean? Very messy. Noisy? Yeah, very messy and noisy, and... then you cut yourself in that as well. DNA, bang. In the end, I had, like, 287 um, offences, do you know what I mean? Since the age of 15, of stuff really that I hadn't been caught for as well, and that's the stuff that I could remember. Some of it had fingerprints on, they had CCTV stuff, like a dossier thing on me, do you know what I mean? Wesley's got a phenomenal memory. Um, he'll even remember the registration numbers of vehicles, exactly what he's had out of vehicles, so it makes our job so much easier. What's going to happen in this case is um, Wesley has been reported for the initial offence, so he has been put into the criminal justice system again, um, and he wants all these crimes to be TIC'd on the back of that, and that will go through to CPS. It will be up to CPS to make a decision as to whether they want to prosecute Wesley and take him back to court, or whether, because he has now actually got the full drug treatment testing order. Um, whether they consider it is in the public interest to, to proceed, uh, Wesley knows that he's got the sword of Damocles above his head. He knows okay. if he walks out or he breaches the order, he's going down for about five. Everything we're doing, it relates around getting the drug out of him. Now, obviously, he's detoxed completely. That doesn't take long. It's called cold turkey. You do it while you're banged up in prison. Um, but the problem comes is the psychological effects of years and years and years of drug abuse, of drug lifestyle, and being used to lots and lots of money, but being used to lots and lots of drugs and the people you're moving with and you're living on a day-to-day -day basis, and in a lot of ways, raise to raise, isn't it? He's got to get something so he can sell it for cash to get the drugs. To get that out of somebody, it does take a lot of very, very skilled counselling. Wesley gets counselling in the Lee community near Oxford. 20 years into the war on drugs, police now accept that rehab is the best way to stop drug crime. The Lee community is run entirely by ex-addicts who support each other, keeping watch for any backsliding. Their weekly group confronts anyone who fails in their duties. Private relationships threaten the recovery of both individuals and the group. You've been fucking running around like a bull in a china shop, pissing a lot of people off. Not doing fuck all on house support, just sitting in there doing jack shit. 
You know what I mean? Your head's been fucking all over the place, or you're talking to Sarah and not talking to anyone else. Someone else talks to Sarah and it's fucking moody looks. I, I want to... Don't shake your head. Yeah, Ollie, you're talking shit. Look, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. There's three people in here. Talking fucking shit. Listen, right? Shit at First all. thing I was going to say to you, when's the fucking wedding bells? It's Dean, I'm true. fucking yeah, telling you. Part. Fucking true. Every, in the you're still giving people Every time I look. see you, she's you the only her. person you're speaking to. She's the only person you're spending fucking time Dean, with. Fucking and is. you're pushing every other fucker away, including oh. her, for the way you're being being around Dean, here. Dean. But if everyone else can see, why can't fucking you? Dean, you're always with her. Get out. Yeah. Trying to do it. I'm fucking fucking you. I'm fucking you. I'm fucking you. I'm If we don't live in this house, how the fuck have we got this information? Right, cos we're still fucking seeing it. Now, you've done nothing but throw everything back since you fucking sat in that chair. Why don't you sit back and listen to what these people are saying to you? I mean, Dave said to fucking me that it, it, it was doing his, you know, his, his head was done in. And, and you haven't asked him if, you know, if he's all right. He's fucking having dreams about fucking up. And you, and you, ain't, you ain't asked him if he's all right. Apparently, you, 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 you chatted to him. I didn't get a chance to talk to you up until we went out on the back porch. Because and after that, you left me with a lot of fucking feelings. You know what I mean? You're finding it hard in your busy fucking self-pity schedule for any other fucker. If you listen... Don't give me that no, fucking bollock, fair, 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 fair enough. You can abuse me all you want, mate. I'm... You know what I mean? Makes no fucking odds, cos I know I'm right. If you You're all right fucking right, ain't ya? Right, right, yeah. All right, I'm, fucking got a gift to the gab. Due to you got a fucking gift to the gab and you're fucking you learning all, all your fucking Dean. bollocks. Dean. I don't Dean. give a fuck, right? Group's on you. Bollocks. Dean. Group's on you, Dean. Dean. Group's on you Dean. Dean. Man, fucking listen, you always got a gift to the gab. Always got the fucking answers. Be your fucking special, you know? You fuck all. Dean. Prick. If he's always got the fucking answers, why the fuck aren't you listening? What the fuck? Fucking listen. Try and use the group to learn something new about yourself. Because we know you can shout. We know that you've spent a lot of time with Sarah. Sarah's put her end up to it. Put you right in the shit. And then you decide to focus on something that's, I think, as Paul said, is your stuff. If you feel guilty, you feel like you've let somebody down, you feel all those feelings that are there because somebody's actually pointed out that you haven't done everything, then it is good that you've got those feelings. Because a year ago, you wouldn't have gone anywhere near him. You'd have just had a hit, buried it, forgot about it. Never would have surfaced. Now you've got them, and it hurts. That's progress. It's good. What can you learn from it? Well, I don't know. After the group, I asked them why this approach was better than prison, where they'd all been several times. It didn't seem as bad. Second, you know, I went, when I went a second time. It was just like, well, this is prison. I, I know I can get drugs in here. I know I'll be getting out soon enough. You know, I need, at least I got some food and somewhere to sleep. It, I wasn't actually sorting anything out. I was just carrying on the same as I was. It just, it's just like, well, it's the second time. You know what I mean? And I think I cruised for this. You know, cruised for this. You know, it comes easier because you've got some sort of understanding of it, and so. It just becomes like um, what's, what, yeah. occupational hazard. I mean, I've been to prison eight times now. Do you know what I mean? And, and it does it have any effect on your offending? Nothing whatsoever. On who? On your offending? Nothing at all. Made it worse. I've got clever. I know how to do alarms. I know how to surveillance techniques. At the, do you know what I mean? How old are you? 23 now. 23? Mm. So what do you think has happened to you since coming here? I've changed a lot. My whole um, outlook on life, I think, has changed, do you know what I mean? I think because I got given the chance. I mean, at first, I was, it was a 50, it was, do I want it, don't I want it, do you know what I mean? Because the excitement does stand out for me from that, from having them chasing me about. Um, I was very lonely out there as well, do you know what I mean? I've come here and it's took a while, but I've got friends here, do you know what I mean? And I'm learning to understand myself better. Um, I've been here six months now, do you know what I mean? I've, I feel really good about being here and all the stuff I have done, I can look at it now and think, God, that's shit, do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's the way I really do see it. 20 years ago, DC Gary Hilton's job did not exist. He and 10 others across Thames Valley keep track of local sex offenders. Public fear is now so high, police need to know the whereabouts of all convicted offenders on their patch. Uh, the Sex Offender Register came in in 1997. It's for every person who's convicted of a sexual offence, whereby they have to register with the police their name and address. It's anybody who's convicted at court, 
caution by the police or release from prison for one of the specific offences in the Act. Um, once they register, um, obviously we compile as much intelligence information on them as we possibly can with a view to stopping them re-offending. So this file in here has got hopefully all the up-to-date information on the offenders on their area, um, what they've done in the past and what type of victim they might uh, attack in the future. His job is both to prevent future victims and protect offenders from being attacked and driven out of town. But he needs their cooperation to keep them from going to ground. A lot of people think that I do a job that nobody else really wants to do, and so therefore I'm, I'm doing a good job, if you see what I mean. Um, I'm certainly, I think the public would like to know that somebody's actually looking at sex offenders and not just waiting for them to offend and then reacting. We're just on our way to visit. Chapman's just come out of prison for, I think it's six years, for serious offences against uh, boys. And so I'm just going to go and see him and find out what's going on in his life, work out if there is any problems or there could be any problems with where he's living. We like to pay a visit um, for various reasons. One being is that um, obviously nobody around here knows that you're a sex offender at the moment, and hopefully we'll keep it that way. Have you done a, a lot of treatment programme and things? I start this month. Do you? Yeah, I've done, two in, I've done two in prison. Did they give you any idea of what sort of risk they think you are? Did they tell you anything about what you know how likely you, you are to re-offend? I think they're a medium, I think. They told you you're about a medium, yeah. did they? Yeah. You know you've got to go on the project, haven't yeah. you? Um, they'll, they'll give you uh, an up-to-date reading yeah. on what they think. Um, but what I have to say to you is that um, at the moment, we, we, the police, um, until we get the official uh, assessment, have to look at you as being quite high risk. Right, I understand, uh, yeah. Because of what you did in the past. Yeah. And, and who you did it to. You know, I mean, I, I don't understand these levels. I mean, as I say, I don't do groups. I mean, I'll say it's... Uh, I don't well, do, you still, do you still... Do I fantasise? Yeah. No, I no. don't. If, if you had to have sex with them, what would be the ideal age that you'd have sex with? 25, 30. Yeah. So you wouldn't go as low as you went before then? Not now, no. No, I don't want to go back to prison. No, no. Well, that's good to hear. Well, nothing's changed. I mean, he's still got sexual desires towards young men. I mean, he says that, they, you know, he'd sort of go for the legal age, but he, there's nothing to say that he will, if the opportunity arises, uh, go for somebody a lot younger. I mean, we, we can do the best we can. We can keep an eye on him and all that sort of thing. But he's just one of a few in this area. Our film on rape 20 years ago helped to change the way police deal with victims. Now they have a squad to deal with sex crimes with special arrangements for those who claim they've been attacked. But police must keep a delicate balance between sympathetic handling and testing the strength of any complaints to see if they'll stand up in court. In Milton Keynes, WPC Sue Wilson prepares a young victim and her mother for the interview. So it's just a normal house which we've adapted to do interviews. Toilet's there if you need it. OK, and I'll just show you around what we've actually got. Come in here. Come on, you can follow me, there's no problem. In this house, we actually um, speak to victims of physical and sexual abuse, children. So you can imagine sometimes if they've been physically abused, we'll bring them here to be examined by a doctor, save them going to the, ha to the police station or to the hospital. This is where we're actually going to be recording the video. You'll sit over here and I'll sit here. So there's nothing for you to worry about. It's just a chat between me and you. There's no one else in this room at all. The interview is done one to one with another officer in the next room taking notes. Video is a new development to spare child witnesses from appearing in court if the judge allows it. Tell me about Start right at the very beginning where you remember meeting him. I first met him, yeah, it was about a year ago. I was of what used to be my best friend. And um, her dad knew this person called and he was across the road. We were by the phone boxes, just went for the less, I think it was. And then um, he called her over and said, bring a friend. So I went over as well. That's what, that's where it all started. Um, and then he kept phoning me and asking to meet me. 
and I used to meet him. And he used to take me places, like to see my friends and that look, like a little taxi service. How old is he? About 37, I think. So How old are you? 15. How old were you when you met him? I think I was about 13, actually. Did he know how old you were? Yeah. How do you know? Because he's asked me a lot of times how Is old he? I am, yeah. What does he do for a job? He's a bus driver. So when did he first start touching you that worried you? Oh, right from the very start, because what he used to do, he used to lean over his seat, put his hand in between my legs and then just start kissing me and then used to right, pin so me back. This is in his car? Yeah, this is in his car. Where would you be when this was happening? Oh, in lay by. How would he get his hand into your jeans? By the zip. So did he undo the zip or did you undo the no, zip? No, he done done it. Okay. I have to ask you these things because we need as much detail as we can get. It's OK. He's put his hand into your jeans. Yeah. Now, into your jeans possibly means onto your stomach, doesn't All it? Right. Uh, you use any words you want to use. Whatever you normally use if you're talking to your friends. He'd just put his fingers at me, basically. What did he do with his fingers? Twiggle them around. Okay. When yeah. did he move on to do something else? What? Like what? Well, you, you said to me that he's actually... Well, I took it that you were saying he attempted to have sex with you. Yeah, he has had sex he's, with you. he's tried to do that about four or five times. Right, so remember back to the first time. It was on the back seat of one of his buses. Where it was, was on that? his brake. I don't know, because his buses go all different places, okay. don't so they? So tell me how it led up to you having sex on the back of the bus or... It was on his brake. He came out of the driver's cab thing and just took me to the back seat. Was there anyone else on the bus? No, nah, because it was his brake, it was just me and him. What did he do with you when he got you to the back seat? Uh, pulled my trousers down to about my knees and then put his thing in between my legs. What did he put in between your legs? What do I call it? Well, what do you call it? That's the most important thing. What do you call it at school when you're talking to your mates? What well, I say? Yeah, of course you can. His cock. His cock? You put his cock in between your legs? Yeah. Did he have an erection? Do you know what an erection is? Yeah, I do. <laughs> no, I don't think he did, actually. I think that's why he took it away. Cos it was all floppy. Did you want it to happen? No. I don't mind speaking to him, but I just don't like it when he does things like that. OK, so when was the next time it happened? And that was in the lay-by again. And then he put the back, the seat of the car right back and just got right on top of me. And what did he do then? The same thing as what he did before. OK, did he have an erection this time? Yeah, he did. Yeah. And, yeah, and he actually said, um... He said, do you want it, do you want it? And I just ignored him and tried to get him off. And he said, oh, is it because um, you're fine, you can get pregnant or something? And he said, do you want to use protection? And when you said you tried to fight him off, what were you doing? Just pushing him, but he's really heavy. <laughs> so how far did he get his cock? You said he's on top of you and he's got an erection. Well, he just put it um, right at the top between my legs, like, and then sort of just pushed... Down. Where did it go? Just down. <laughs> it didn't go anywhere. It didn't um, go where, sorry? It didn't go anywhere, it just went down between my legs. That's it. And what were you doing at the time? Just laid there thinking, oh my god, what have I got myself into? So I never thought he'd actually I actually considered myself quite lucky when I got out because he didn't actually do anything. Four months after this interview, the CPS decided not to prosecute. We've had some intelligence to suggest that a particular offender, who we've already got a sex offender order against, he was in fact breaking that order. And there was also an issue of him possibly being evicted from the premises. If we didn't act now, we could possibly of losing uh, any evidence that we could get now when he's evicted. So therefore, he might be on the streets and all the things that go with that. So what we decided was we'd have one last chance at catching him doing what we thought he was doing. So we went up there. Some other colleagues covered the back. Sure enough, he was in there. And also in there was a 14-year-old girl. Earlier today, I arrested you for breaching a sex offender order 
uh, that was granted against you and, and I cautioned you. Is that correct? Yes. And that was at your flat? Yeah. Who had been in the flat before you answered the door to us? Well, I mean, about five minutes later, you knocked on the door. Right. And how old is she? Well, she says he's 14. What was she actually doing in your flat when we knocked on the door? She was just um, saying um, about her boyfriend. Right. But what was she actually doing? Well, she was going to do the hoover, and I said, no, don't bother about that. Because she tells us that she was actually doing the hoovering for you. Well, she said, start doing the hoovering. I said, no, don't bother about that, because um, I could do that myself. So she was doing the hoovering? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's only about a minute. Right. I ain't got no attention. Right. You know, people don't breathe. People so you've never had any sexual relations with sh No. And you understand what I mean by yeah, that? Yeah, I've never had a relation. I've never had a film I'm, so. I'm talking about anything, like just touching no, I didn't, I didn't, anything. No, nothing. Right. Now, obviously, you've admitted to us a breach of a sex offender order today, I guess. Yes, I, in, I don't, in, in, I'm not denying that bit. No, right, OK. But it was an attempt to... Uh, For which you, you could be charged now. No. You may be charged. I'm not saying you will, but you may be charged, right? Um, so, obviously, what I'm asking you now is, is whether you've been responsible for any other uh, offences of the same sort of thing, where other girls have been back to your flat. No. But certainly there's been no, they don't always go now. a lot of complaints yeah. from all the residents in your block about young people either going to your flat when you're there or being in your flat when you're out. I'm right most of the time. Right, OK. Because uh, when they come, that, that's a couple of times they came and I phoned the police. Mm. Now, you can ask Sarah's dad how many times I phoned the police. Yeah. All right. What I was going to ask you, Roy, is um, these young people... Um, you don't have to go down the phone box. They might... If they have uh, had something happen to them sexually by you, might take a long time to tell somebody about that. All right. No, no, that's exactly Hang on, that, let me finish. All right, because with this sort of thing, people don't tell people very quickly most of the time because yeah. they're very scared. Lots of different things. All right, yeah. and it might be that a year, two years, whatever goes by before somebody tells somebody and say, "Oh, I need to tell you back." However long ago, I went to a man's flat and he did something to me. No, right? there's nothing like that. Right. So what I'm trying to do is make sure that none of that has happened now, because otherwise it's going to come out in the future, isn't it? Well, you, you can find out, but I find I'll tell you the truth and nothing. Right. So nothing. none of these young people, all no. these young people, I'm talking about no. all, the, all the waifs and strays that have been going there from London, the boys from London, the missing boys from London, Missing boys, they're not missing boys. They've been reported missing, a couple of them. Oh, I don't know about that. So no, right. uh, Sarah's so, 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 so boyfriends and all that lot. Well, you may not know that, but what I'm saying to you is none of them at any point in the future are ever going to make uh, no, cause I, I, an I, accusation I, against you. No, because I, I, I have done anything, anything like that. OK. Custody, it's not right. you're through, really? Yeah. Yeah. Sign up no, the white line, please. Then, yeah. Yeah. OK, what's going to be happening? We're going to be charged with the offence. Just listen to this officer very carefully. You're charged with the offence. It's shown below that you do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention now something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. You're charged alone on Wednesday the 13th of June 2001 at Reading in the county of Berkshire without reasonable cause, did an act namely invited, encouraged or permitted a girl aged 14 years to be present at which you were prohibited oh, from yeah. which you were prohibited from doing by a sex offender order made under section 2 of the Crime and Disorder Act 1998 on the 11th of January 2001 by Reading Magistrates Court Crime and section 28 of the Crime and Disorder Act 1998 OK, do you have any reply to that charge? No, sir. OK, nothing at all. OK, uh, what's going to happen is I'm going to remand you in custody. Well, hang on, I don't think you can make that decision until oh, you've heard my representation. Right. I've got a sort of place to go. I've got people that are going to get money tomorrow. Uh, please let me do my job. Uh, I'm concerned that you've indicated that you prejudged the issue first of all. But th this allegation, as I understand it, is a technical one. It's got no overtones of sexual behaviour on his part. There's nothing sinister about it and I think we all know it's not going to be visited by a custodial sentence at the end of the day. This girl was in this flat of her own free will, there's no suggestion she was compelled to go there. 
Now, to refuse him bail, it seems to me, you've got to be satisfied, firstly, that he might not go to court. He's got no previous convictions for failing to surrender to bail. As I say, he's not going to get a custodial, custodial sentence, so there's no incentive on him to not turn up. He's got a fixed address, community ties, no reason why you can't bail him to that address. And I think in all those circumstances, it wouldn't be justified to refuse him bail. Right, OK, I've listened to your representations. Can I just say one thing? Sorry to interrupt you. The uh, sort of um, going rate for uh, conviction under this uh, offence is two years' imprisonment on first conviction. I'm aware of what the maximum penalties are. That's five years' maximum. Crown court. But in other cases that I'm aware of, there's been two year custodial given. So your uh, point of he was not like to get custodial is actually not right. Well, I think okay. it's my, my reasons for remark are that. If I grant him bail, I do believe he would commit further offences whilst on bail. No. Rubbish. The suitable bail address has been boarded up at the moment. I've just got that back from the officers. I don't believe he has a suitable address for bail. That's been withdrawn by the council. Yeah, always me. I'm not sure. Right, 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 right. Right, come on. Oh, I've never jumped out of the fucking night. Right, let, let them finish what they're doing and then we'll talk a bit more right, about it. Stay there. Alright. I don't kill myself. I don't care. I'll just trust my ear. I'll do anything. I'll do fucking anything myself. Right, what, what I don't care who. Right, it's for your own protection. Why? Because that's my decision. It's one of my decisions to remind you. There's three reasons why I'm reminding you. Necessary for your own protection. You don't have a suitable bail address. And I believe if I release you you would commit further offences. No, For those three reasons, I am reminding you, and you will appear before the next available court, which is tomorrow morning. Do you want to walk out again? No, you should have to the other two said I'm going to give another one. Oh, we're going to give another one, are you? Well, that's it, mate. That one's... I'll get you another one. No, I don't know how you can't get another one off. Go on, then. Oh, I'll take it. Eat that one, then. Yeah, we'll get another one. The next day, Roy was remanded in custody. After three months, he was sentenced to undergo treatment in the community, much to police frustration. Um, you'll have to do that in the morning because... Oh, I want to get to the tonight. Well, you're going to be able to smoke tonight, because it's busy out there, so um, they'll ask you if you can ring in the morning. You're going to get to smoke tonight. Well, you won't be smoking tonight. You can't smoke in bed. You can't smoke in bed. No. See you later. Come on in, boys. Rehab works best when the addicts are far from the temptations of familiar territory. After seven months, Wesley found the rules and emotional rigor of the Lee community hard going. He's now at loose again in Oxford and risks going back to drugs, crime and prison. He's at a vulnerable stage in his recovery. I got into a relationship with a female resident there. It was quite a big rule. Um, Anyway, it come out, done the consequences for it, but I don't know, it just got to the stage where we were together all the time. It just got to the stage where I, I had to either remove myself, otherwise I was going to get removed, you know what I mean? And that, that was the bottom line, although that... So I just, took my, I just took it on myself to leave, do you know what I mean? Every time we went back up there to see him, to make sure everything was going right, he was, he was up for it, and it was a lot of overconfidence on his side. Mm -hmm. And then when that happens, it's like anybody, it does knock the wind out of your sails. And yes, I felt it that, you know, Wesley was the first one I put through this whole system. And uh, he's, he's, he's left. Why is he left? Yeah, then when it came up, the circumstances was it, was it was to do with a romantic relationship of whatever description. You're starting to think, well, hang on a minute. Normal emotions are starting to come through here. Um, the drugs are going, the psychology's getting there, you're rebuilding her life. You know, obviously he's got to go to another rehab, which probation are doing. Is that the best option? Yeah. Well, why is it the best option? Um, just to, um, I think, to get out of Oxford again. To get out of Oxford is going to be a good one, I think, for me. If yeah. we hadn't been there and there'd been nothing yeah. to do with myself and John and all the rest of it, where would you be now, do you think? I'd be back to doing what I was doing before. It would be, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, with that, because that's what's happened before, that is yeah. behaviour pattern, yeah. Please should help me here. Yeah. We, we're keeping you... Which is a big thing, yeah. We're keeping you on track to get a life, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I'll let you know Yeah. Well, they'll keep in touch with you as well. Yeah, all right. All right.
Residential rehab places are costly and therefore scarce. Hello? Yeah, it's Wednesday to see Charlie. I'll let you in. Cheers. Before probation could find him another bed, Wesley went back to drugs and to car crime. He has just been reconvicted. In Reading, Ben, the persistent young troublemaker, has also been committing more offences. Local police have one last hope, to show him around a young offenders institution before he's sent there by the courts. He's blamed for causing criminal damage to the town hall and receiving a stolen go-kart worth 500 pounds. His parents now face eviction because of him. If you're going to commit a crime, you've got to earn some out of it oh, yeah. to make it worth your while. But the crimes he's committing is senseless. Yeah. Criminal damage? What do you get oh, out of criminal damage? Smashing the window or kicking it's... the door? What do you get out of it? It's a kiddie stuff, isn't it? What do you get out of it then, Ben? What do you get out of it then? Nothing. I mean, like the go-kart. If you nick a go-kart, you're going to sell it and make money. You ain't going to ride it around, smash it up and then just leave it. No. Senseless, isn't it? I've been in this house long enough now, you know what I mean? And, I've spent so much money on it, even though it's a council house. Yeah, you don't want to lose yeah. it now, do you? That's it, I don't want to lose it for him going out doing something so pathetic. Mum said about you going to Huntercombe. I don't know where it is. It's Nettlebed, out Henley Way. I'll show you. They'll take you. You don't know, you'll find out where it is. Yeah. You, you going, David, are you? Hey. No, I've been there. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't going there again. Have you? All oh, yeah. right. I mean, certainly not a nice, nice. Nice place to go. I mean, Reading's bad, but. Reading well, Prison's my old two town, Winchester. Right. That was the hardest one up there. That's what I found mainly. Nowadays, oh. prison system's too slack, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's not supposed to be a place where you enjoy yourself, is it? Well, no. Or have an easy time. Well, no, but you do. Yeah. I do. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but yeah, they do. You go, I mean, Dartmoor. People talk about Dartmoor. I went to Dartmoor and didn't affect me one bit. No. Bullingdon. <laughs> they might as well shut the place down. There more drugs in Bullingdon than they got on the Reddit Street. <laughs> you know, it's no good, is it? No. It's no good. I think they should bring back the old training camps. All right, they should bring back the detention centre on Bullingdon. No, that's what he says. Yeah. In it's prisons, you don't march, it? you don't do nothing. No. In detention centres and in Borstals, you used to have to march everywhere. Yeah. Your shoes had to be gleaming. Yeah. You didn't have to have a button missing. You know, if you did, that was it. You struck. Yeah. Local police are regularly interrupted in their work to cover major public order problems like demonstrations, state visits and pop concerts. In one week's time, protesters plan a march through Oxford city centre to the Yamanuchi lab on the outskirts to protest against their use of animals for testing. We've had a, a number of meetings with the organisers who have attempted to keep the whole thing terribly low key, no section 12 notices, uh, no deployment of horses, dogs, helicopter and all that sort of thing. And, and trying to say to us, look, um, Trust us, it'll be all right. Well, I'm prepared to go along with that to a certain extent, but uh, I'm certainly not prepared to abdicate our responsibilities in, in this sort of thing. So there will be Section 12 notice. I think that gives a legitimacy then to, to any things that may happen thereafter. But I'm quite happy tactically to keep things like the horses, dogs, evidence gathering teams, and the normal bits and pieces we would have with public order events I'm happy to keep them in my back pocket for a, for a bit of time. And if the demo goes quietly, then fine, we don't have to use them. If it doesn't go quietly, we would not hesitate to deploy them. As with all these things, of course, if it's terribly quiet, then we've got, we've got too many officers. But we do have a history in Oxford, have we not, of the animal rights protesters running amok. Certainly when we had the, the business at Hillgrove and the cattery up there, uh, they came in and, and made a bit of a mess of the city centre. And I know that they do want to get up to the university buildings and some of the, some of the laboratories and, and, and places up there. Uh, also, I 20 years of public order conflict have landed police with a battery of new laws to enforce. Section 12 of the Public Order Act lets them impose strict terms on demonstrations, but officers must follow the proper legal steps or risk trouble in the courts later. Excuse me, breaking off and going into the secondaries, then as far as I'm concerned, the deal is off. They've broken their word about this is going to be a peaceful protest with no attempts to go to any targets at all, in which case we're then able to deploy the dogs, the horses, the helicopter. OK, I just want to talk about... You haven't to yourself, no. If they climb the fence, because yeah. we've looked at this problem before, um, you know, it's a civil <laughs> trespass, mm. um, and, and we just need to look very carefully at what particular legislation, OK, if we're going to be pulling them back off the fence or they're going to be detained inside, are we going to go inside the fence line and arrest and escort away? Yeah. 
if people climb over the fence, I would refrain strongly, or suggest strongly, sir, that we do not pull them off the fence, because we would be open to allegations of them of assaulting them by ripping their hands, etc. We've had this down at Older Maston. As with all these things, a very final judgment. And in the majority of cases, I think people who climb fences end up breaking a bit of the fence, and, and, and there's a criminal damage thing there. And, and if they choose not to let go, whilst you know, nobody wants to hurt anyone, that's a decision that they make, and, and we don't back away from that, from our responsibilities. Okay. Some of the things that they could try, to try inconvenience us, or Yamanuchi, and they have done it before, one of the things they will do is sing, super glue their fingers together through the fence line. So when you pull on them, they may not be able to release themselves from the fence so solely on the grounds that they've super glued their fingertips together. The protesters are anxious to avoid the cameras of the police evidence gathering teams used to identify troublemakers. We've negotiated with the organisers. Uh, one of the things that they've asked is that we don't have EGTs with us in their faces as they've described it. That's been agreed should they choose to commit criminal offences or if they choose to start filming us, so the officers that are involved in this operation, if they're getting cameras in their faces, then we will review the uh, situation. Protesters gather in a playing field near the city centre. From here, they will march to Yamanuchi. Public order relies on mutual trust, but both sides have a long history of conflict. Steph Lee meets the organisers to confirm the terms of the march. Uh, this is uh, one piece shoes you can see around. We haven't deployed our evidence gathering team as, uh, as negotiated. And um, what we have here, or what I have here, is the um, Section 12 notice. I'm sure that, uh, I'm sure that if, it's, uh, if it's written well and you won't need to implement it, we'll get one yeah. of our solicitors. Yeah. Right, OK, well, I'm actually giving this to you as you are the organisers, all right? And I just really want to go through it with you. Whether you choose to accept it or not from me, that, that's your choice, but I just want to go through the actual right. order itself. Well, give it to us. I can read. I've got a degree. Right, OK. What I did say at the meeting, which was if there is a Section 12, then basically if people do deviate from that, I won't be involved won't be pulling in pulling it back. back no. Because you've got a Section 12, you've got legislation you use sure. it, so it's a different situation to Cambridge. Yeah. Don't don't start yeah. ringing me up saying people are in the road or anything in else. Cambridge, not interested. We, we won't incite wrong. them yeah. to move, but we won't, you know. Yeah. Can I just ask you if, if there is any sort of deviance from the Section 12 conditions, are you going to be willing to negotiate with those people? No. no. Right. It's not negotiation in the true sense of the word if you've got negotiation, but somebody stood over you with a big stick saying, yes, you know, there's trust on both sides, but, but if you don't do what we say, we've got this big club over you. Fundamental principle here that we believe that the public order right was brought in as a club, basically. We are only able to get the cooperation of the animal rights movement because we have a certain level of... Um, credibility. If we start enforcing public order rights, mm. however generally Doing we your do job. that, we lose our credibility. Live exports, there was tinklings of direct action, but I think we got rid of live exports through people power, through demonstrating, through getting on the streets. Brilliant tactics, we learn, we educate ourselves. We couldn't have done it without the incompetence of the Thames Valley Police. <laughs> The area commander wants Steph Lee to read the Section 12 terms to the crowd to ensure they've heard what is required of them. The problem is, is that we've had 
cameras from your opposition, so to speak, thrust in our face in relation to what Mr McGuire decided to do. The tactical advisor reports the protesters' use of cameras, so police deploy their evidence-gathering teams. Go the other side. Then if they've got one inside the crowd, they'd have to go towards the cord and we cover that. The sight of police camera teams has led protesters to sit down in the city centre and stop the march after just half a mile. When I was actually reading out section 12, I had cameras in my face. So you've had EGs out all the time? No, I haven't. Why have you got them out now? Time to negotiate. It's over. Okay. We're now. Right, okay. Steph Lee takes the tactical advice and withdraws the cameras, but only temporarily. They're moving of their own accord. We'll keep the EGTs in. Keep the EG teams. We need more officers to actually channel them. And apart from that, generally, it's going OK. At this moment in time, not a need for horses to come in. I think that we can uh, manage it by just slowing down the march, bunching them together. The other thing, Steph, while you're on, we've still got Reading holding the, the Long Wall Street area and have concerns about them, the protesters doubling back. Is that a valid concern or can I release Reading, do you think? Steph Lee gets the extra officers to try to keep the marchers to one half of the road. All across the road, do it now! Press across to your right, all the way across. Go on, follow it on, follow it on, follow it on. Hold it on, hold it on. Despite concerns from officers on the ground, the area commander decides to send in the horses. Go ahead. The horses are just get deployed to the front. I think there's going to be problems. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. We'll, we'll weather that problem. They've broken the promises, and, and that's, that doesn't surprise me at all.
Stand back. Stand back. Stand back. Stand back. Stand back. Move away. Move away. Move away, please. I'm not English. You're speaking some English. You're speaking English plenty. Yeah, I'm English. Good. I'm a student, only 17 years old! Only 17 years! Okay, this is good. Just walk normally, alright? Just walk. Push it, run away. All the policemen over there. Clear it off. He's been shouting English too long. He's speaking English to me, he's only a student. Do you want to just go in the back? Okay, you got the door for us? Yeah. With a mile still to go, the march is now in disarray. Police attempt to reopen negotiations. What we've got here obviously is untenable. We've got to move forward. Uh, what we want to do is we'll take you up to Yamanuchi. What's the problem now? The problem is you've got the horses and you keep stopping people. Right. And people are pushing through. You've upped the tempo incredibly right. already and you didn't need to do that. Right, Officers I'm... at the front of that march are being kicked by your people in your procession. I'm not prepared to allow that to continue. Well, they're too near. They're too right. near the banner then. What I need you to say is this. Excuses. Listen to what about the Chief Inspector... Well, I didn't yeah. see the lady get knocked, okay. so that's a side issue. Fast. Yes, we need them to keep yeah, slow. Well, I can slow them down. You've now got horses, you've got police officers, whether you like it or not, and I'm not excusing people kicking your police officers. You've got police officers down the side there taking pot shots. If we remove the horses, will the march, will you take yes. the march forward? We will, yes, we will take right. the march forward, we will take it peacefully. You need to get your, your officers are hyped up now and our lot are hyped up, right. which is not what we want. I'd ask you yeah, to ask your people to comply with the directions as they are from police officers. I'm not prepared to say that. That okay. would completely under are you going to tell them to act peacefully from now on? I don't need to. I don't need to. It's your lot that have no, upped no, no, the ante. No, 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 I am not going to say act peacefully. I'm not, and I'm to not argue with you. What you need to do is you need to pull the horses back, and what they will see that they will see that there is some clawing back of the original agreement. Take the horses out of the equation because the horse horses up it straight away. I will get at the front with the banner. I will slow it down. Keep your police officers a reasonable way away because I can't see anyone. If I see anyone kicking, I will have a gentle word with them. But I'm not doing your job for you, and I'm not right. saying that we're right. compliant. Okay. Let's let's move them a right. bit. And I will try and get them. There's limits. I'm going to back my officers off. I want you to go along the front line of your your, your supporters and, and tell them to stand still so that I can withdraw my mounted officers. I will ask them. That's all I need to do. One. I will ask them to do it. I'm not. I'm okay, not, I'm and then I can give them. you that breathing gap that you yeah. just asked That's for. That's fine. Yeah, okay. and, then we'll move. Okay. and then when we get up there a bit and it's calmed down a bit, I will try and get them over to the Thank other you. side. Call your speak to the horses then. Okay. Yeah, okay. Do you want to. Are you happy? No, I'm fine. No, that's not exactly. I'm really disappointed with the protesters. I'm not at all surprised. Uh, I always thought they would break their word. I always thought that the, the group that tends to infiltrate perfectly legitimate protests would actually cause disruption, cause the violence that we saw today. And uh, I think what it means is um, even more officers being deployed onto these sort of protests in the future, and probably greater disruption for the people in Oxford. So disappointing all the way around. The rest of the march passed off without incident. All that will be recorded from the work of several hundred officers for a day are two arrests which came to nothing, apart, of course, from the overtime the officers were paid. So much of police time is spent being called to recurring problems, they now try to address the causes instead. They take Ben on a prison visit in a last-ditch attempt to stop his offending. I've got this fear that, bearing in mind the type of background that, that Ben comes from, and the type of environment that he's living in at the moment, that uh, this could possibly swing the other way and seem an attractive place for him to go. He's got nothing going for him at the moment at all. He's been excluded from school. He's got no education. He's got no home tutor. He's wandering around the streets, bored every single day. Any opportunity that arises for him to commit crime, he's seizing that opportunity. By sending him somewhere to Huntercoo, he's going to have a nice little room. He's going to have three meals a day. He's going to get an education. He's got all the recreation facilities to uh, look forward to as well, the pool, the, the table tennis, the whatever. Oh, I'm just, just a little bit sceptical about the whole thing at the moment, but we'll see. Hopefully it will do some good.
police cannot reach the social causes that lead to school exclusion or domestic violence, alcoholism or child abuse. They just get stuck with their consequences. Police are taking Ben to prison because schools and social services have given up on him. Oh, this is Ben. How old are you, Ben? 14. Oh, he's 14. And what they've decided to do today is bring Ben into Antikam uh, just to show him what it's like in here. And we thought it'd be a good idea because I know you two fellas have a chat with him and just to let him know what your time in here has been like, especially you know, the early days, your reception, and how you've sort of come good. You know, what I want is honesty. The first night is terrible. You get people that try and make you sing. And if you start singing, then that's it, they're there, and you're there. They bully you for the rest of your sentence. Do you know what he's talking about when he's talking about singing? Mm -hmm. What will happen is that you'll go up into your cell on your first night. You, know, you might be the only person that comes in that cell, and you might be 15 years old. Right? You've got 59 people trying to check you out on the first night. You've got 59 people that are going to want to take your tobacco, that are going to want to take your property. Right? You're going to have people, window warriors, right? they're going to be trying to make you sing nursery rhymes out of your window all night. And you've got a choice. You, know, you either sing, and they leave you alone, ignore them, and they're going to beat you up. Officers at work here <clears throat> try and stop that, but you don't have, it's not a one-on-one. -on -one. They're not with you 24 hours a day everywhere you go around here, and there will be times when you are by yourself. And it's the old adage, there is always somebody bigger and harder than you are. How many people have you seen crying in there? Hard, hard people? Quite a few of ones that were crying that first night in. On the landing, I was about five cells away from me, I could hear him. And crying in all night, it was. Every, look, a lot of people do. <clears throat> right, if you just think about the other side of that gate, then. Right, just stay with me, whatever happens, just stay with me, yeah? This is what you've got. All right, so if you're about uh, lovely tellies, okay, and having a cushy time, this is what you're going to have on our wing, right? Not particularly clean, it's due to be painted, okay, but you've got your toilet, you've got your sink, you've got a bed. So, you know, it depends whether you want to swap home for this. Yeah, what do you think of this? Is this what you expected? Man. And what did you expect to see when you come into a cell? Full of bad in there. Must be pleased to see you. Look into a crystal ball and be sure that I don't, you know, that really make my day. Because I don't, I don't <coughs> like putting boys up there on the wings. You know, it wouldn't matter if the walls were painted immaculate. You know, at the end of the day, you don't want to be up there banged up in a cell like that, do you? Because if you're in here, you're in here for X amount of time, and then you'll know what you're missing. That night, Ben went back home and reoffended. Lovely. Thanks very much. Cheers. Going back to Thames Valley was both reassuring and sad. The essential tasks of policing remain, but pressures and expectations have spiraled. Where have all the coppers gone? Too many are doing paperwork. The rest are keeping order. That's essential for any society, but very hard to measure. Having observed police for two decades, I think much good policing never attracts attention. Instead, we make increasing demands that often conflict. We want police to catch more criminals and prevent future crime, to deal with any emergency from a lost child to a train crash, and yet we want more bobbies on the beat. We build failure into their job description. We want them to provide reassurance. 
but we do little to reassure them. So what's it, apart from he's saying he's going to cut you to pieces, what else has he been saying to you? I've seen yeah. elbows going up like that, legs knees, going up like that. They were just knees, everything everything go, everything the goes. shit out of it. So they grab me, they get me down, they near me in the head, they throw me down the stairs. Don't swear like that, sir, and I wouldn't suggest you go out and take it into your own hands, OK? Cos it may be that you end up getting arrested. What about these kids? You know, I will tell you why you're not doing this, because they are copper sons! That's why, because they're copper sons! Bye-bye. Sorry, you know the drunk lady. Can we stick fingers up with the police car for, mate? It's disorderly behaviour. No, you can't, mate. I'm, I'm telling you, you can't. It's an offence. Can you just calm down a second, sir? You're shouting. I can't hear what you're saying. Let's walk this way. Don't try anything, Duff. The most important thing is, today, that this is the end of your drug taking. All right? Now, if this is the end of your drug taking today, then I've done my job properly. Right?